baseball show, the show where we will discuss crazy crab, the only one around. I'm Nick Pollock <laughs> and joined by the often interrupted Alex Fass. That's not true. I don't feel like I'm often interrupted. That would have oh. been a perfect opportunity for you to interrupt me. I know. I was just thinking about doing it, but I <laughs> uh, no. yesterday I was reflecting back on our on the corner podcast and boy, boy, did I interrupt you a ton. No, and no, no, I realized no. this is a thing I do. This is, Hey, this is, this is Nick Pollock. I just get so excited and I have so many things and I get to hang out with my buddy, Alex fast, but uh, I, I interrupt you a good amount and I'm working on it. Okay, buddy. It's never, it's never malicious. That's why I never really mind. It's never malicious. It's also, I'm very empathetic to the fact that you are streaming all day. You are talking alone. And then mm. here comes someone <laughs> with an equal energy that you need. I'm saying you are such a lonely person who is not <laughs> used to interaction. <laughs> oh, you're so people. alone streaming. Yeah. I don't and, mind when you yeah. interrupt me because you're just so alone in life. Uh, oh, no, my I'm God. Joking. I'm joking. I um, mean, he's not wrong, guys. we a lot of great guys. stuff to talk about today. Nick, today's the fun one. Today's Nabs. Yeah, yeah, it's Nabs, the fun podcast. The other one sucks. Um, <laughs> as always, rate and review us on iTunes at the Nick and Alex Baseball Show, as well as, of course, the Pitchless Fantasy Baseball Mega Feed. Um, we have two new reviews that we didn't read out last time, and we should have. Let's do it. And um, we've got the first one. From some kid who watches this, they say, great show. I don't normally do podcasts, but NABS is super fun and insightful. Five stars. Ah, oh, thank you so much, some kid who watches this. Would you like to read the other one fast? I would. This is from XX Nuke Bombs XX, which is just, <laughs> I mean, if I that's a that's a COD nickname or a COD name if I've ever seen one. I'm I'm ready to, to go to <laughs> it's Call of Duty. Adelaide. Call of Duty is COD, by the way, for anyone who isn't familiar. I'm ready to play satellite with this dude. He says, love the show and your positive energy. Thank you for your fresh take on baseball. It's very kind of you. Yeah. Um, my my uh, uh, PlayStation name is Spaghetti. So if you want to play. Oh, of course me, it is. Please, uh, I, oh, oh, my God. Uh, so if you want to play. I love when people say my name, too. They're like, if they're trying to say, like, I should do something in Call of Duty or whatever game I'm playing, they're like, Spaghetti, go do this. Or do you know who Brandon this. Lee Mulligan is? Uh, yeah, he's a YouTube guy, right? Well, he's a college humor guy. He's in Dropout now. He is a brilliant man. He has a whole moment about that. All right, fine. Uh, he, God, he's such a, I, I have such a crush on that man. He is so brilliant and hilarious. He does like D&D um, stuff, right? He does that too. Um, yeah. The best thing he does is with Game Changer and uh, making noises. It's, it's, it's just, they're tasked to create noises and it's the greatest thing in the world. All right. So not talking about that. This is a baseball no. show fast. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> oh my god, that is harsh. Okay, um, we're gonna go to the mystery pitcher, and I have a mystery pitcher that, of course, I totally I did not actually make as an individual image. I'm gonna do that right now, but I I'm gonna read off the stats of this pitcher right now. Okay, five and seven record, eighty three innings, two uh, three forty seven ERA. I uh, so already just kind of be like, hmm, this is a this is kind of interesting. Uh, you got a... Oh, man. I'm messing this up. I want to get this on screen, and I'm not doing it well. Yeah, let's get it on screen. I know. I know. Look at this wonderful uh, okay. screenshot I've got. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah, it's paint, is guys. <laughs> is that what this is? This is MS I, I just... I'm working under stress here, all right? Uh, 347 right. ERA, 122 whip, 20% K rate, 5.4% walk rate, 28% CSW, 93 mile per hour fastball. 13.6% swing strike rate, 33rd best in the majors, by the way. 24.5% hard contact rate, 40% ground ball rate, 132nd in the majors. Fast. Who do you think this is? I mean, I gave like a really tough one because this feels like every normal, just regular old pitcher. I have a guess. I'll make it. Oh, guess. really? Actually, I do have a guess. I didn't cheat okay. and I actually think I might be right. All right. So if you want to say it now, I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong. I'll guess now. Yeah. Do who do you got? Later. Do you I'm gonna, got? I look at the good walk rate. And I uh -huh. look at the good swinging strike, and I see the uh -huh. mediocre everything else, and I think it's Dean Kramer. Okay, all right. I, I'm going to say, which may or may not fit the person that you just said, mm -hmm. um, that this pitcher has been pitching much better as of late than they did earlier in the season. And, and that fits my Kramer narrative. It might be. It might be. We'll get back to that later. Uh, think about who that pitcher could be. Five and seven record, 83 innings this year. Uh, I, that's a fun one to me. Um, but we we got some things to talk about. And the first thing we got to mention is this. All of a sudden, the Los Angeles Angels, they might sell the team fast. 
Yeah, there was some, there, you know, we're, we usually kind of try and stay away from overall breaking news, but rarely do we get breaking news like a few hours before we record a podcast. And the Angels are, it, it looks pretty official. He's, he, it's not like he's like, I'm shopping the team. He's considering it. That we've seen. You don't yeah. say that. You don't say that you're considering selling the team without selling yeah. the team. So you know? I guess th there are so many different, you know, Jeff Passon tweeted about this and he, he kind of hit the nail on the head. There are so many different directions, really, that you could go in, right? Yeah. The best case scenario is a guy comes in. He says, I'm sick of that team 30 miles away, getting all of the respect for L.A. Yeah. We've got, you know, two superstars. I'm going to invest all my money in it and make sure that we finally get them into a playoff contender. And, and then you got someone like Nick Pollock who just shows up and goes, I've got five buttons in a paperclip and they're going <laughs> to give me the team. You know, well, you're probably still more analytically savvy than anyone else who might work for. No, that's joking. not true. Absolutely um, not. It is. Uh, but that, I mean, that's I mean, that's the hope, though, right? Is that someone comes in, as you mentioning, spends all this money and actually looks at their their development process and their their coaching, all of it. Because we've I mean, it's been a joke. I'm sorry, Angels fans, but it's been a thing of like we don't trust the Angels to develop good no, no. pitching. We no. don't. And, and we don't want that to be the case. No, the other option too that we I, I we really don't want to be the case. Or I, I shouldn't speak. You might want it to be the case. Is is the they move right? The other option is an owner come oh. in, comes in and he says, you know what? Uh, there the Dodgers are never going to be beat in this market. Uh, we're sick and tired of trying to appeal to to you know people coming to Disney. Like we want this to be its own thing. We're moving. We're going to Portland. We're going to Tennessee. We're going to Las Vegas. Then Shohei Otani has gone, especially if they move further East. Cause he yeah. seems to have made it clear that he wants to be West. Right. God knows what happens with Mike Trout. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot of different ways that this could go. I think you and I are both in agreement that the former is what we want to see. I mean, it is exciting in the sense of, I we've been kind of saying that the angels are in this purgatory of we don't expect they, they need more homegrown talent because they spend a lot of money on these major players. Like you want to talk stars and scrubs. That's what the angels are right now. Mm -hmm. And you need to have something that actually um, pushes them back up. I mean, obviously you had Taylor Ward do some wonderful things and he got hurt and that damaged that the pitching staff was actually really good at first. And then it got worse. I, yeah, you just want, some change to happen and so it's good news in my view obviously it depends on the new owner i mean i don't want them to move inherently i think la can't have two teams and be very successful there yeah i i mean obviously you know montreal still deserves the team nash will be cool or yeah charleston or charlotte or whatever that stuff um i know you mentioned portland why not here you go portland here you go. that'd be nice i i think i'm I, i'm with like um I guess I'm such a sucker for like, or, or, or I'm so anti change that I would like to see them stick around. Oh, it's you're old fun. man, huh? No change for you. No change for me. It's it's more fun. Just call me Coinstar. Uh, is that more? what? No, uh, no. You you accept all the change. <laughs> that's true. But I turn it into something that's not change. You know what I mean? Um, I I, I want to you know as chat mentioned, I want a Steve Cohen to come in and say yeah the equivalent of you know the Yankees aren't the only team in town, the Dodgers aren't the only team in town. We've got the foundations. The thing is, though, I wonder if any owner who's serious, who comes in and looks at that organization, if they feel like, oh, we do have talent. Maybe our, our farm system maybe is loaded enough that we could compete. Or if they're like, I've got Otani. I've got Trout. I can turn this organization around right now. Right. Yeah. Like even with Trout's maybe, you know, injury that he's going to be dealing with. There's a chance that if if this happened immediately in the offseason, he could say both of these guys are gone and I'm getting Juan Soto like returns two times over. Sure. Uh, and then we'll be competitive in two or three years. That would be that would be kind of fun. That would be kind of fun. maybe. I mean, uh, uh, look, I think ultimately what we care about most. I'm sorry, Angels fans. We don't care about you. We care about Otani and we care about Trout. No, no, that's we, not true. We want them to be successful. We need Trout in the playoffs. We need Otani in the playoffs. If that means them getting dealt to teams that are actually in the playoffs and competing like that, then great. If it means that the, the owner comes in and invests in the team, look, I've, I've kind of said, we, we saw in April and May that the Angels can be a winning team. It's yeah, not course. out of the question. It's just, all right, you spent a lot of money on Rendon. You spent a lot of money uh, on Pujols. You spent a lot of money on Trout. And you spent a lot of money on Otani, right? There's a lot of money that's already eaten up. So it's hard to to go after it. 
Um, and as Yancey says, it's Otani, Trout, and Ren Rengifo. Uh, you can't name a better top three. You can't. That's true. You Thank can. you, Yancey Eden. Wonderful guest here um, in the Twitch chat. But so that's all we want. We just want the Angels to do well. Uh, look, change is good here. It can't be the status quo. And that's, it sounds like that's not what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and now this is all to say we're pulling a John Oliver moment right now. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to the link below, there's the GoFundMe for Nick Pollock and Alex Fast to become the new owners of the <laughs> Los Angeles Angels. Yeah, exactly. I love that too. It's like, <laughs> we've actually been showing you a photo of the Dodgers all along. You just yes. didn't realize it because no one knows who the Angels are. Um, yeah. I, you need I an angel for, investor is what we're saying. Oh, very lovely. I feel for, I do feel for Angels fans. I, I, I sympathize with them a bunch. It must be incredibly frustrating. So I hope they get what they want, which is an owner who's going to spend and get them a team and get them into the playoffs so we can finally stop talking about not actually seeing Trout and Shohei Otani in the playoffs. Right. Before we move on, uh, well, actually, we are going to move on. And this sounds facetious, but I do want to have a quick moment of silence for Walker Bueller's elbow. So we could do that real quick. Great. Thank you very much. Getting his second Tommy John surgery, likely not going to pitch until 2024. Uh, just stinks. It just stinks. I mean, yeah, it's, it's terrible. Um, you know what my thought goes to right after I have the moment of, all right. Yep. I wish we had more Walker Bueller. Um, there, there's, there, well, there's two thoughts. There's one of, Oh, cool. We got like an actual path to recovery. Because we've been, you know, this year we we saw he wasn't pitching as well, wasn't as hard, it just didn't click. And it was at the end of last year too. And now we have an explanation for that. And we can feel the the question marks we had about next year. Like we don't have to deal with that. And at least now he's like, cool, I am fixing myself and I will be my best self hopefully after, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's something to be said about that. Um, the second is, I mean, the Dodgers have so many pitching options. So it's kind of nice for Dustin May. I uh, to think, oh, right, that doesn't may. I uh, Andrew, he I believe Andrew Heaney is more on a more, more than a one year deal. Uh, it, what I'm trying to get at is there are a lot of pitchers that I uh, we didn't really know how it would work out next year, and without Walker Bueller, it does have a little bit more clarity in that regard. The one year, you're right, just the one year. year, okay. And I assume so with Tyler Anderson as well. So I uh, just makes it like, all right, Dustin May's gonna get a lot of innings next year, and so will Tony Gonsolin, you know um yeah let's see yeah he's also on a one-year gear as well that's that's interesting uh i wonder what that also means for isn't clayton kershaw a free agent as well he is yeah so actually i i take it i guess i take it back because now who is gonna pitch for the dodgers is it just who's gonna pitch for the dodgers it's, it's urias gonsolin in may mm -hmm. and then you have just a good one two three and then you have jacob de grom <laughs> because, because it's the dodgers the Dodgers really would get Jacob Degrom. They they really would. Yeah. Like I wonder what the betting odds are right now. Would you put it above a third of a chance? I would be very surprised with Steve Cohen if he doesn't open up the checkbook and say, "What do you want?" Because mm -hmm. money's not an issue for him. I don't think. I think he gets that Met spirit where no one wants to see him in I any other jersey. He didn't get Stephen Matz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's if that's quite the same. <laughs> Um, that is a really interesting conversation. You know, it would be fun. I actually kind of like the Dodgers come, being out here has given me. Oh, a, now a you're saying like, oh, let's go Dodgers. That's all right. It's fine. Oh, I, I, I have an appreciation for their fan base. I think it would be fun to see them win uh, nah. a, a World Series to remove the asterisk. Of the They're the new Yankees. Season. They're the new Yankees. I disagree because they, they, they have they get everything. talent. They get everything. They, they get everything. But they have a bait. They have aside for, you know. They, I feel like they have more homegrown talent. It's not like the Yankees don't have homegrown talent. They, no, no, they but they did. Talent. But when we, when we talk about the Yankees the way that we used to talk about the Yankees, they had homegrown talent there. Sure. You know, Cano, Jeter, Posada, I, mm -hmm. uh, Pettit, like Rivera. Like these are homegrown talents. Yeah. You know? uh, but it's, yeah, it, it's just the Dodgers always get the thing. They always get the thing. And it's annoying. And I'm sick of I it. <laughs> it would be nice just for the state of parody to have them suck for like two or three years. That's I'm always so funny, too. Man, like, we're just, I'm just hating on LA fans today. I am so sorry. I, mean, I know, really. I'm, I'm the one who's supposed to hate this city, not you. Um, <laughs> oh, you I, hate I the think, city? Oh, no. It's not my favorite. I hate uh, them because they stole you. <laughs> Don't worry. It won't be here for long. I think that they... Um, 
I, I, you know how in football this happens a lot, not to bring up that other sport, where the, oh, you God. will recycle franchises, right? There will be a franchise <sighs> that's so terrible for so long, and you're like, well, oh, wait, now they're good, and I need to think about – I need to change how I think about them. That cycle in baseball sure. is longer, right? Well, because you have teams- longer careers for, for players. Yeah, you have longer yeah. careers. The way contracts are structured are a little bit different. Um, you know, Miami has not been a good team for a majority of our uh, of our fandom, right? Same with the Orioles, right? Uh, same with the plenty of other teams. Same with the Angels. Um, so it, it would be good to get some new blood in there. But the, I want to yeah. move on. Actually, that, that's kind of perfect. That brings us to our, our next topic, which is what I want to do. I want to go ahead and take a look at the standings right now. And as it is, huh? there's a lot of parody more so than we kind of think and i want to go top to bottom top to bottom al start with the divisions and then the wild card i want to predict the playoffs we're not going to do matchup to matchup all the way to the world series we're not going to do that we're just going to say who's winning each division and who are the top three wild card spots so nick i'm gonna hand it over to you let's have you do everyone in the american league first okay so i think winning the al east um are the baltimore orioles uh who are only 11 games back (laughs) Oh, you. Uh, no, it's going to be the Yankees. We all know it's going to be the Yankees. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that, that's, yeah, I, I wish. Uh, God, it'd be so much fun just for you if the Orioles make it to the playoffs yeah, and then get swept. Oh, no. And then uh, <laughs> um, AL Central, it should be the Twins. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's the, that's the hard one. And then uh, I I'll, want to hear your thoughts. We'll go more into that. And AL West, we all know it's the Astros. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, are, are you saying is he not the Yankees in the AL East? Yeah, let the, here, I'll do my AL ones yeah. and then we'll get to the wild card. Yeah, I, I think that it, I mean, the Yankees are obviously on a very, very bad run. I think Jay, Jay Jaffe wrote an article on Fangraphs today saying that they're under 500 for the past six weeks, which yeah. is, and it, the standings don't show that because of how insane their first half was. Yeah. Because they're still eight games up despite being that. Eight, yeah. I don't. A- I don't think any team will get within three or four games of them. I'm, that would be a surprise to me. I think it's definitely theirs to win. Um, I don't know. I think I don't think the Guardians, despite being the best team in the AL since the All Star break, I don't know. I just look at that rotation, and I wonder if that's sustainable through the rest of the year. I wonder if it's sustainable not pitching against the Tigers so often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, I you know? just don't. I don't know. So then it really comes down to, I think, this kind of war of attrition between the Twins and the White Sox, right? Like, Twins really getting hurt with with Gray and Molly. Um, although Gray just pitched, right? He's back. Um, Gray, a great pitch. The Sunny Gray pitched yesterday against the Rangers did well. Yeah. So oh, Molly night. there. But then, you know, they just called up Aaron Sanchez uh, to, to fill in there. Against, uh, against the Astros. Man, I, if you remember, do you remember his last start? I mean, it was against the Tigers, I believe. But I think was he had it four. Eight... He had like eight strikeouts. He's Aaron always, Sanchez. He's always, he's always been intriguing. This curveball was great. It was, what? Okay, it was the he's Tigers. He's always been intriguing. Astros, but I'm very curious to see how that goes. Just because it's Aaron Sanchez, you know. I, I I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and say the White Sox. I know that they've been mm. obviously nowhere near what they should be, and I know that every two strike count seems to be like an intentional walk for them nowadays on the on the pitching side. But I, I don't know. I just still look at that top to bottom i think their bullpen is better than the twins obviously because that bullpen is just known to melt down so i'm and they're only three games out i think they're going to be able to do it uh in the west yeah there's no question it's the astros so then let's move to the wild card who are your who are your three wild card spots well you know before we before we move on i feel like we need a proper reaction to uh to what you just suggested um and i think i think this suits it well there you go (laughs) just uh just Tony Russo being like am i am i in the dugout right now uh, was that right <laughs> where am i where oh am god I? yeah all right um I, I, look about the the AL Central just just for a moment here the strength of schedule for the White Sox is 475 Guardians is 496 and then the Twins is 503 the rest of the way the White Sox should do this their offense is not as bad as it is now I, now, Tim Anderson, I believe, is hurt right now. Uh, they've certainly gone through their injuries. Lance Lynn is getting better. I think Lucas Giolito, at some point before the end of the season, does figure it. It could be tonight against your Orioles. You have Dylan C still doing well. The slider has been worse, but it still should be really good the rest of the way. Michael Kopech is not good right now, and I don't know how much he even pitches the rest of the way. 
And you, you see a team that I think was one piece from actually taking away the AL Central. If Dallas Keuchel wasn't so Dallas mm. Keuchel, mm. if they actually did get just anyone, Martin Perez at the deadline. You know, Johnny Cueto cannot put this team on his back, all right? That Cueto Watch. magic can only last so long. I think the stat I put out was across his last six starts, he has an IPS of over seven. That is innings per start of over seven, a 222 ERA, and a sub 9% strikeout rate. Sub 9%. His teammate Dylan Cease has over three times the strikeout rate in that time. And he has a 2-2-2 year A. Uh, it's blowing my mind. Uh, so we'll see with the, with the White Sox. I think they should do this. The Twins, without Molly, they're really hurting. They just lost Buxton. I don't think they actually... I mean, I said that it should be the Twins. I uh, They have a, a tough road ahead. And then, yeah, the Guardians. I mean, Tristan McKenzie just 14 strikeouts the other night. You know, Jose R- Ramirez is phenomenal. So is uh, Jimenez as well. You know, I'm changing my pick. I'm going Guardians. I, I just, really? I just not the Twins. Just not, not the, the twins. twins. Okay. All right. Well, what about the Whites? What about the um, Wild Card? Excuse me. As, as much as I want the Twins to get rid of their playoff curse, because we all need that to end. Yeah. They haven't. They haven't lost. They haven't won a game in like what 17 straight or something. It's so it's, bad. It's sad. Yeah. Um. It's, it's horrible. Okay. Wild Card. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah Long yeah. tangent. Uh. It should. All the AL East teams. <laughs> I mean, maybe the the Mariners too should. Okay, it's 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 your Orioles and your Mariners. Who are you going to take fast? I I think it's what it will be right now. I think it'll be Tampa Bay, Toronto, and Seattle. Yeah, I mean it should be, but then again, the Orioles are three games back behind your behind the Rays right now. Yeah, that's amazing. That that is kind of crazy. Yeah, the 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 two and a half from the Mariners. Two and a half from the Mariners. It is kind of crazy that the top three spots are all have the same record. They're all 66 and 55, except for the Mariners who are 66 and 56. They're all within a half game of one another. They, they've been doing fantastic. The Mariners are a small little mini losing streak. I just don't think Baltimore's got a difficult schedule. They're going to play the White Sox, and they're going to play the Astros a bunch to end the season, yeah. as well as all the other AL East teams. Only uh, the Rays know. have the tougher strength of schedule the rest of the way. Um, in the in uh, the AL, I think actually in the majors. Uh, no, a couple guys. Oh man, Diamondbacks and Rockies, poor fellows. I uh, but I uh, who is okay? Let's say the Orioles. Like we're doing a three game series. We've got the six spot in the AL. Oh my lord, who mm-hmm. are you throwing out there? Game one, game two, game three. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, <laughs> it, it, it is. It's like it's Jordan Lyles. Is it? Is, it, is he SP one? I don't know. Yeah, Jordan is Lyles, Dean Austin Kramer? both, and Dean Kramer. That's your one, two, three. No, no Spencer Watkins in there. Oh, no, no Spencer Watkins. Tyler Wells would theoretically be back. Maybe if DL Hall really figured out no, his command. No, no, no he, I don't think they're setting him up as a reliever for the rest of the year. Uh, I, that's the uh, plan. No, he, he's down. He's down right now. Yeah, so but they're planning for him to be a reliever in September and then stretch well, out in, in the spring. I feel like the original plan was to keep him up to be a reliever. So I don't maybe, maybe they're still going to stick with that. Yeah. Uh, when they I call him so. back up. But he's, the, he's, it, your, he's things, your wild card for the wild card. Things would be different if we were in the wild card. Maybe they would change their tune. Maybe not. Um, oh, I man. like I, I've, I've started. I played this tune all year. I don't think that they're a playoff team. I'm just overjoyed that we're even having this conversation. I know. That's isn't it fun? Team. I look, I'm so happy. I apologized in like a month ago. I Got apologized it. before the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I am proud of you that you didn't <laughs> dig in your heels on that because you would have been in a world. Of oh right God, yeah, right. <laughs> All right, let's move on uh, down to the uh, to the you, NL. You know what uh, I truly want? What? No, I don't. I think actually the worst case scenario. Maybe I kind of want it as I want it to come down to the final day. Then the Orioles. Do I want them to win or lose in that final day? I don't know. I just want there to be a final day. I don't want to be so honestly, cruel to say them for the lose. Honestly, I I want to. I I am. Uh, very if we let's say it miraculously came down to a seattle baltimore obviously uh-huh. i want baltimore to win but i would not be as upset if seattle got that spot like i would well, be yeah. very very happy oh and okay it's, it's the same thing i talked to uh you know former pitcher list employee michael ahedo about this uh, uh just recently i don't really care if adley finishes second in rookie of the year uh because it's all about 
getting that those extra draft picks right in the service time stuff it's mm. it's it's if he doesn't finish top two then i'll be pretty upset oh i see i see what if you're he saying he falls off yeah you know I mean? but just yeah i know rookie of the year what yeah, does you, it get me? okay okay Yo, fast okay hold on first of all that's very nice of you to say all those things mm -hmm. but yeah, we all know how you actually feel about it and I, look, like the, I, we all just want the Blue Jays or the Rays not to make the playoffs and the Orioles and the Mariners to make it. And that's cool. That, that's really cool. That's true. If, really if I had my choice, it would be the Blue Jays, the Mariners, and the Orioles. Yeah, sorry, Rays. Sorry, yeah. Yankees. Get them out of here. Okay. Sorry, Yancy. Uh No, they, just get the Yanks out of the AL East. Um, let's go to the, the NL. But before we do, we're going to take a quick break. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching live. You get thanks this. So this is your yeah, moment. You this you is your this moment insight. live, people. You get this insight where <laughs> this Alex is extra... to a work slack in the middle of a break. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. I got to write down the timestamp so I know where this is for the edit. Yeah, you got Felix Bautista. Good point. Daytona. Um, you got the entrance for the World Series. That'd be cool. Yancey wants to see Jorge Mateo in there. Uh, they're saying uh, he's saying uh, both uh, was three year A. This is how the sausage is made. It's disgusting. How do I ban? How do I yeah, ban him? we can't. He's a moderator, though. We can't really ban him. Oh, God. A I moderator know. never listens to voicemails. It's unbelievable. All right. And, and we're back. Okay. So uh, as we yell at people who don't listen to voicemails, that's the kind of thing you get if you watch this <laughs> live. We're going to talk about the NL now. And I started before. We're going to lead with you fast. Now tell oh, me God. the division winners of the NL East, the Central, and the West. I mean, the, uh, the only divisional race that we kind of care about is the NL East, right? I mean, like, I sorry to the Central, but that's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, I don't really care. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> I don't know if it's like three dominant teams heading toe to toe. Well, well, okay. Well, time out for a second about that because the Brewers are made for the playoffs. And this is something I ranted about last time where I hate the fact that the Brewers could have Burns, Woodruff, and a healthy in-stride Peralta for the playoffs and be so set up to win more games, where Aaron Ashby's on the IL now. Eric Lowry is fine, but he's not really what you want to throw out there in a playoff situation. So yeah. the Brewers entering the playoffs make a larger impact than the Cardinals do, in my view. Even though the Cardinals pitching, I mean, look at Jordan Montgomery and Adam Wainwright and Michaelis, and these guys having these great seasons, not quite the same. Yeah, okay. I guess uh, yeah, I'm maybe you're right. Maybe and that that should be a fun race down the line. So you're right. I take it back. But the I well, guess, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, I care. I care. I guess I don't know. The Mets versus the versus Atlanta just has a kind of I don't know. Th those seem like two kind of juggernauts, really just kind of duking it oh, out, yeah, right? Because I can say like, oh man, it's like Degrom and Scherzer versus like Freed and Morton's been fantastic. Yeah. When I talk about Milwaukee or St. Louis, I'm like, it's Corbin Burns versus. Miles, Michael. It seems it seems like milk toast baseball, and that is the yeah. most insulting thing I'll ever say uh, on this podcast. I'm so sorry, Cardinals and Brewers fans. Uh, I will I will mention. Fertree says a good thing here in, in the chat. Flaherty is back uh, next week, so maybe the Cardinals mm -hmm. have something more interesting there. But yeah, no, it's yeah. like the, the late '90s again. The Mets and Braves. Oh, that was so much fun. Robert Ventura hitting the walk off double. That's a grand slam in the rain. I yep. mean, that if it has that energy. You have the the comments of Spencer Strider. Talking about luck and how the Mets aren't that good, that kind of thing. Like, mm, I'm, I'm getting into this, you know. Uh, even if they don't, you know, whoever wins the division, you might see them lock, lock horns in the playoffs. So, uh, I'm looking forward to that one. Well, who's got the easier strength of schedule down the line between Atlanta and uh, and the Mets? Um, the Mets. The, the Mets do 470. Actually, the easiest of any team in the National League. Yeah. Uh, then I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Mets. Then I mean, Actually, I think they are all teams. All teams, all in, the teams in baseball. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going to go. There would be nothing more Mets than hearing that fact and then not making, you know, not winning the division. But I'm going to go with the Mets. I, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with the Mets. I'm going to go with Milwaukee and obviously the Dodgers. So those are my top three picks for, for the NL playoffs. Sure. And um, I, I could be making a grave mistake right now. And I don't mean like a Kendall Graveman mistake. Um, I actually believe I'm reading strength of schedule, not as remaining, just how it has been this year. <laughs> and the Mets Nick. have had the easiest one this year. Nick. <laughs> Nick. 
<laughs> I should have admitted it, but I, I, I'm too, I'm too truthful to you guys. I can't lie. I thought it said remaining strength of schedule, but it just says regular season strength of schedule. Nah. But anyway, I'm going to rest of season win percentage is what I should have used, and that's mm -hmm. six, six eighteen is actually one of the hardest of any team out there. It's actually the hardest one in the majors. Bro. Is it really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I go with Atlanta. I, I am the worst. Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta has a really tough one too. So, I I am the abs absolute worst. Yeah, White Sox are the hardest one of the AL Central. Um, just recounting all of this, uh, the Orioles have the worst. Yeah, four oh six. They have the worst rest of season one. I in that division four hundred. It's, all, for the all, it's all AL East and uh, and and Houston. No, as in like. No, 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 no. The rest of season winning percentage is forty is four hundred six, like forty one percent. Yeah, a facing. They are going to get the oh, easiest schedule. Yeah, of anyone oh, in the AL East. Was the opposite. No, okay. that's no. Kind of bizarre. Yeah, um, wonderful. Who are your three picks for the NL? Um, I'm going to go with the Giant. Now, okay, uh, the Dodgers. The it's going to be the Cardinals. It's the Cardinals Devil Magic, and this whole Pugos thing is wonderful. We'll talk about that. But you gotta, you gotta just think like, yeah, they get that nudge, and I, uh, <laughs> with the easiest strength of schedule left. No, um, I, I think it's gonna be the Braves because it's the Mets, and I feel like that just, the story it gets retold every year, and I, uh, the one thing that we know about history is that it repeats itself. So yes. I'm going with Atlanta here. Okay. So Atlanta, and then oh, here we'll move into the wild card. Then, uh, uh, not as interesting a wild card race uh, as after Milwaukee, uh, who's one and a half games back into the playoffs right now. It's it's the Giants uh, who are six and a half back, and then Arizona who's eleven and a half back. So it's really um, unlike the AL, where it's technically like six teams. I mean, oh yeah, the Red Sox are six back. I don't see them making the playoffs, but it's no. not unheard of. It wouldn't be sure. unheard of for them to make up that ground. It would be unheard of for the Diamondbacks to make up theirs. So you have to figure Atlanta is a hundred percent a lock. Either Atlanta or the Mets are a hundred percent a lock. Um, so then it becomes the Phillies, the Padres, and the Brewers. The Padres still cook them with gas, uh, even though Tatis is is not going to be back for quite some time now. Now, especially with that shoulder surgery. Oh man, this is a tough one. This is a really fun one between Philadelphia and Milwaukee. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm gonna say Milwaukee. Um. Oh, I'm going to say Milwaukee wins the division. Atlanta, Philly, and San Diego make the wild card with St. Louis missing out just for fun. Oh, wow. Is that fun, though? <laughs> well, I'm going to so, contradict myself later, but that's what I'm going with. Cool. All right. Uh, I mean, so the Giants we're not going to give credence to. Um, okay. I I feel like the Phils, I mean, between the Phils and the Padres, whoever wins that division, the Brewers or the Cardinals, the other one will make the playoffs. That's what I think. Okay. So between the it's between the Phils and the Padres mm -hmm. for me, and you have two organizations that have just been disappointments, um, and the Phillies are obviously coming back and roaring hot and all of that stuff, and you have Ranger Suarez doing well, and they also have, um, actually they have kind of a tougher uh, situation or, or uh, rest of season winning percentage um, than I would expect given the easy pitching schedule ahead for those guys. Maybe that's more back loaded. Uh, but, I mean, the Padres just have all this bad juju right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Clevenger's slider is not looking good. Manaya is really shaky. Uh, Musgrove is going through some adversity at the moment. Uh, it's just, I, I want to give it to the Phillies. I'm going to root for Aaron Nola and, and Zach Wheeler. And sorry, Padres. Okay, so then you're saying, okay, so it's Milwaukee. Uh, so it's Milwaukee, uh, Philadelphia, okay. and Atlanta. All right, we're set. We got it. Or, or the Mets, I guess, because I said Atlanta would win the division. Okay, let's stick with the division and stick with the uh, Cardinals. Is the next thing that we wanted to talk about here was what the best player in baseball right now, <laughs> Albert Pujols, who, yeah. as Jeremy Frank tweeted, is having had the best 10, de uh, 10 game stretch of his entire career. It's not wonderful. Okay? Entire yeah. career. Do and you know the, you remember the career. year? You remember the year that Albert Pujols uh, debuted? 2001. 2001. 2001. 
Yeah. There's one. We're I know things like, fast. That's a different world. 2001 is a different world. We're yeah. Talking about. Like, yeah. that's crazy. So, yeah. Albert Bowles has been playing baseball for a very long time, and he just had the 10 best games of his career. Okay. So, A, the question I have for you yes or no? Very simple, binary. Will he hit 700 this season? He's at 693. One home run a week. Yes. Yes. Not bad. That's a good That's way to not, put it. Yeah. One home run a week. He can do it. He's got also like, there's something to be said about momentum and confidence and mm-hmm. he's in it now. There's, there's a lot to, I don't think Pools is someone that is going to get to 698 and just not hit a home run for three weeks or something like that. You know, he's going to do it. He's the I'm machine. A- <laughs> I don't believe really in many conspiracy theories, but I saw oh, a comedian man. who was like, you have to believe in at least one. And yeah. the one that I believe <laughs> in is that uh, Buck Walter purposefully brought in a terrible reliever to face Derek Jeter in his final home game. Oh, yes, as a yes. I'm with you. I'm with you. To, I believe get a one hit. Game. That was such a meaty pitch. And that shit was, was ridiculous. It was, yeah. It was like, all right, we're not making the playoffs. Let's, yeah. let's make history here. Who cares? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if... Let's see who the Cardinals have their who their last uh the last series of the year. Yeah, yeah. Because I do wonder if there's just going to be like he's a legend. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He could be another guy who gets a hundred percent of the vote. Just serve him meatballs and let so him it's watch Pittsburgh. History. It's Pittsburgh for six games six in a row. Games in a row. If you're wondering, wait, that doesn't happen, right? Because the last three games are uh, because of the lockout in the beginning. They had three days of the regular season: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So yeah, he's gonna get six straight games against Pittsburgh. I mean, there's there's your story right there. Are the Cardinals going to make the playoffs? Yes, they have six games in a row against the oh Pirates to end the year. Wow. So they're going to, before that, it's Milwaukee. So that's clearly not going to happen. They're going to have a stake. That could theoretically be right. a big factor in determining the division. So, so, so fast, you want to visit in October and then we can go get tickets at, to PNC Park for those last three games. If he's those are four gonna, away, those are going to sell out, man. If he is four away, then yeah. maybe because I would want to see them throw four meatballs and have him walk off his career in a four home run game. Oh, uh, that's how amazing would that be? So good. We're both in agreement. I agree. I think he's going to do it. Um, here's the other thing, though. Uh, baseball reference, I believe, gives him a 15 percent chance. Wow. It wasn't like 7 percent like two days ago. And then all of a sudden jumped he hit another home run or two. And there you go. Yep. So here's the thing. If he doesn't, let's say season ends today. He doesn't mm-hmm. hit a single home run. The fewest he is hit season uh i was looking at this earlier now i don't remember the fewest he has hit when he's had when he's played 100 games is 19 obviously he was 38 when that happened and he would be 43 next year he's hit 14 this year at age 42 he would need literally half the production next year Hmm. would you give him a one-year deal oh no 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 no. you give him a day-to-day contract with the cardinals until he hits it yes oh absolutely you can, you can, I mean, Ichiro did it for what two games with the Mariners? Uh, yeah, you know, when it was played in Japan, yeah, like, yeah, you can, it's a contract, you can do whatever you want. Like, you yeah. want to do it for one day, buddy? Great, Will Farrell, you want to play every minor league game <laughs> or spring training game for every team, whatever? Yeah, okay, you but know, would the Cardinals do it though? Would the Cardinals yes. do it, or would the uh, ideally it's the Rockies, right? Oh, don't make the man end his stuff and do it. Like, come on. St. Louis, do you know how many tickets they'll sell and how much hype they'll be? I feel bad for the guy on the roster that doesn't make the team in that time. But you don't need all the relievers. You know, just whatever yeah. one of them. Come on back, buddy. You're just a reliever. Go back to the bed. <laughs> Go back to the bus. Sorry. Sorry. I don't know why I'm hitting relievers. I'm, I'm hitting everybody today. I'm so sorry. But yeah, you know, you do one year deal or one day deal until it happens. Or you do the, the one year deal and then he retires when it when it happens you know okay so the other the other I, i'm i'm with you i think yeah sure mm-hmm. you might lose a few games but you want to watch history because could he be the, the last 700 home run hitter that we see no the current leaderboard right behind him is 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 miggy at 506 so there's no way he hits 700 the youngest person on this list is trout at 30 with 334 
No, he's not going to do it too many injuries. I mean, exactly. It's, it's like Juan Soto is the is the current example. But considering how much the game has moved toward home runs, it makes me feel that there will be someone young enough that comes in and is able to play for twenty seasons and does it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's still an average over 30 home runs per season for 20 seasons. But still, I think we'll see it. And that is truly unbelievable. Yeah, Soto is uh, the youngest person on this list, I believe. Is there another 23-year-old? Uh, let's I mean, see. No, I don't believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, is there another 23-year-old? There's a lot of 23-year-olds. <laughs> no, he's the only person in the world who's 23 years old. It's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird thing. He stopped I'm... having children for an entire year. He stopped year. having children that year. It's crazy. They said Soto's the one. He's the choice. Yeah. Um, all right. He so is, He is the one, Soto. Okay. You think then the answer is yes. We will see 700 again, and Juan Soto could be that. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think no. I think he's going to be the last one. I think he's going to be the last one one um mm. all right we're going to move on to the next uh, uh conversation nick i don't know if you can get this this graphic up there for the people oh, of course i can um but it's a, it's a very interesting graphic that was uh put out today um i think on the mlb network network correct um yeah. and it showed the impact that the pitch clock is currently having in the minor league baseball season right now. So mm -hmm. the average time has dropped significantly, like a half an hour. Right. So it's, it's it, I, the thing that I was concerned about, because I was kind of on the fence about the pitch clock is, is the offense going to change? And you look at these numbers, obviously, I don't know why MLB network is putting average on here, but okay. Um, you're looking at the runs per game very much the same. You're looking at the average, very much the same strikeout rate, pretty much the same walk percent hit by pitch percentage. Uh, this, this, first of all, kudos to them. I think this is how you should do it. Introduce it in the minor league, see how it feels. Oh, yeah. Also get, get the next generation of players who this would theoretically impact in a large way, uh, you know, familiar with it. I don't know, man. I think, you know, do it, uh, start it, debut it in, in spring training, Next year, um, let the pitchers get a feel for it. I mean, you're going to have to be in probably a little bit better physical shape because you can't really be taking the time that you need. But I think this is kind of what people want, and I'm kind of for it. I mean, okay. So on one side, yes, I am for shortening the games in this one, make it quicker, make it faster. We all have the Pedro Baez nightmare still. I uh, now at the same time, there is something to be said about the rest given to pitchers in between pitches to ensure health, uh, sure. to make sure that they're not over hurting their arms. That is the biggest contention I've seen against it that I, I do have some worry about. Uh, I do wonder if pitchers will be more fatigued because of this and they won't get those breathers that they often need in stressful, stressful situations. Now, correct me if I'm wrong fast. The pitch timer only exists when there is no man on base. And if that's the case, oh. Um, because you can't really have it timed yeah. for the, the guy's stealing. And then he could steal, yeah. That would limit a lot of the fatigue, because when do you have arm fatigue a lot? It's when you have a long inning, which is when you have guys on base, right? So that might be a good middle ground that might be working well. I mean, that's that's huge. 303 average time down to 237 is significant. We make fun of you know the whole, oh, shaving off three minutes is going to really get people more interested. But this has actual ramifications to attention, which is a good thing. And I, yeah, I think this is an inevitability. It's just about making sure that we do it in a way that keeps everybody healthy. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You got to find that correct balance. But I think it it can be it can be a win win if it's done correctly. It can really be a, a win win. I think for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of hoping that they that they that they move there. Um, all right, Nick. Gee, just go hi. Ahead and what? Do it. Do what it. do you want? Oh, oh, guess what, fast? Guess what time it is? <laughs> it's time for Wild Nuts, baby. <laughs> all right, go ahead. This is, this is all you. Fast, do you have a wild thought for this week? Uh, let me think of one. All right. <laughs> let me think of one. You had a good yeah. one last week. The amount of pain that you go through for this. I have I a wild know. thought that, that actually goes into the whole discussion we're having before about anyone hitting 700 again. And I had an idea. Um, what if we limited the amount of home runs a team can hit in a game? And what I mean by that is only two different players can hit a home run. If you hit a home run after that, it becomes a double. 
say for the ninth inning or later, then it turns into a proper home run. Uh, so, for example, if Aaron Judge is up there, you don't want to rid the fans of an Aaron Judge home run. He has the first one. He can hit four if he wants. But once the team hits two of them, you can only get a double after that. And it also means that triples are still more valuable um, to some degree. It also means, of course, we have the late, late inning heroics, and that's still alive. But just kind of limits runs a little bit. It's a wild thought fast. Uh, you take away the beauty of the cycle. You know what I mean? Well, no, just hit the first, just hit the hit the first home run. Hit the first home run. Yeah. Or maybe you want to add that addendum. If you've hit a single, double, and a triple already, then, then it, can it can count as a home run. I think. Uh, <clears throat> I think this is a terrible thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they all are. It's wild thoughts, no, baby. No, you've had some. You've had some. Yeah, really fair enough. Ones. I think. I think frequently about the one you had last week about like. You know, removing some of those days off so we can see some of those number fours and number fives. And oh yeah, I, I feel I feel very strong about that. One. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. I I think this kind of makes sense. My my ambivalence towards wild thoughts really makes sense with my old man mentality about being against change. Right? Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Too. It's unbelievable. You're 34 fast. You are literally three weeks older than me. That's it. And and what do you mean? And I should like change as a result? And like the fact that we we, we are so different on change. I know. And and meanwhile. You're the guy who's like lived in New York forever, and I'm the one who just changed his entire life. So I live in New York. Why. why would I leave New York? It's New York I, fast. I, I, I'm with you 100%. Yeah. I'm with you 100%. Okay. Cool. I'm with you 100%. <laughs> um, so, what's your wild thought, fast? Um, I don't count. <laughs> I, don't, I, oh. I rack my brain. I, Unbelievable. I, I don't think wildly, I think very logically. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I've heard some of the things that have come out of your mouth. <laughs> That's true, but that's that's the that's the Alex fast that a majority of these people don't get to see because you muzzle me. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's move on to the next topic of conversation here. This kind of speaking of pool holes, he had a yeah. quote earlier today where he was essentially like, "RBI are it for me. Like that's all, all right. I care about. I care about that stat." Gallo had a comment a little bit earlier with the exact same thing. I I wonder. It got me thinking. We, we should listen to this because these are two baseball players in the sport. I can understand uh, this is immediately uh, coupled with conversations about being anti-analytics. And uh, I feel very passionately that front offices do need to operate on a spectrum. If the far left is I pure eye test and the far right is uh, all analytics, you do need to be a little bit more center or a little more right leaning um, than people would think. It's not all about analytics. I can understand the perspective of a ball player being like RBI are more important than you think. And if you don't feel that way, you don't like, well, it yeah, let me read the quote here. This is from a Bob Knight and the Gale article at USA today. Um, he says, while everyone is transfixed on 700, Pools will tell you he's more proud of a number no one talks about these days. He has 2,187 career RBI. The only men in history with more RBI are Aaron, 2,297, and Ruth, 2,214. Pools says, quote, that's a number that means everything to me. That's how you win games. It takes four walks to get an RBI. It takes one homer to get at least one or a base hit. He continues, that's how you win, scoring runs. If somebody comes up to me and says that RBIs are overrated, I'll tell them that they are freaking crazy. Do you agree with that? This is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, I, I understand where he's coming from, right? Like, it, it's it's an important, you know, caveat, right? Like, as a if I'm if I'm pretending that I work for a front office, I'm like, it it doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter mm -hmm. as much as you think it does because it's about roster construction. It's about who's hitting ahead of you. But as a baseball player, as someone who's literally playing the game, I don't care about that, right? Like maybe I care about my WOBA. I care about my exit velocity. I care about my launch angle. I care about the mechanics that I have. But I think it's also fair to let them care about the opportunities that they are given and maximizing them, sure. right? So I can understand that perspective. And I think originally my gut was like, those silly, dumb baseball players. But now when you really take a, a step back from it and, and hear that perspective, I, I, I understand it. It gives you a little more context. What about you? So what I would say is we have an analytics answer for this. Mm -hmm. And I guess we haven't done it, but how about this? Opportunity 
for runners in scoring position and percentage of times that they came through with it, plus any benefit that they have of hitting a home run or scoring a guy from first. Okay. So what we can do, let's just say you have 10 opportunities with man in scoring position and you have and five times you come through in that. So that's, that's 50% or five. And I can actually do what I can do is I can do a five plus, and then any extra RBI you get in non running runners in scoring position and then divide it over the original runnings and scoring position. So you get benefit you get the extra boost of those home runs without it to so pretty much just say like, all right, how much of it is it opportunity? How much is it on your own? Right. Yeah. And you can actually say like, okay, that's the real knock we have against RBI, right? Is that it's less so about your individual ability. It's more so about how many opportunities are presented to you. So if yeah. we're able to do that, if we're able to say, I mean, there's no difference to me hitting a double with a man on third and a man on second and third. Right. And that's not really fair to say like, oh, you get bonus points or something. It's like, no, you, you got you did one thing and now you happen to get more. Right. But if I'm going to say, OK, homers in non runners, runners in scoring positions, how many times did you come through on those? And then how many times did you come through when there wasn't guys when you didn't have the opportunity to? I think we yeah. can calculate that. And actually, that would be the telling number. That is the, the, at the heart of what Pujols is trying to say is I took advantage of opportunities more. Now, we don't really have that stat available. It's not as massive in public as RBIs. That's, that's so simple. I would ask something back. Let's say, what do you think is more important? Is it RBI or is it runs scored? It's the same kind of, it's the same right. conversation. One yeah. is giving an opportunity to someone else, and while the other one is, is taking advantage of it. Yeah, I think... I think you're onto something interesting. I think one of the caveats that you would have to introduce, what you're talking about creating is X RBI, right? You're talking about X RBI and X runs, right? Sure. And I think another way that you could theoretically do that or to add to the formula that you're making is almost like war. Assuming that a league average hitter is ahead of you with a league average OBP, uh -huh. I don't know what the next part of the formula would be, but if you want to maybe normalize, because that's the entire thing with RBI, right? If you normalize the person who would theoretically be getting on base ahead of you, it's all about how frequently are you knocking that person in. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if it, I don't, the thing is too, is like, it, 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 I don't know if that's the stat that matters. That wouldn't provide anything to the conversation more so than Wobo would or WRC plus would or any of that stuff. Right. But I mean, that's to me, what Pujols is getting at is like, look, I've been a producer and scored runs for my teams for so long. Yeah. There's something also to be said about if I'm making mine a rate stat to say, like, how often do you execute that? But to be able to do that for as long as he has is also part of his pride in it. You yeah. know, it's not just that he was successful at it. He's done it so much that he has the third most RBI of any player in baseball. Yeah. Right? It should be no surprise that the other two home run hitters also have it. I, but that's something to be, you know, it's Aaron, Ruth, and Bonds are essentially the only other ones, and Bonds isn't here, but I wonder why. Maybe it's just good to hit home runs. Maybe. Um, but I, but right, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, and he's not necessarily wrong. It, it is no, a showcase not. of consistency and, and no. production for a team. But yeah, I, I do feel that we have better ways of expressing that. Totally. Um, all right. We got three final things to do before we wrap up and we got six yeah. minutes to do them. So real quick, Nick, well, let's pull up our images of the yep. week here. All right, so you're uh, first here. I got you. I'll start with mine. This is an image that I took from a GIF. This is a really lovely moment where uh, yeah. Ronald Acuna Jr. standing inside of the batter's box. You've got this young fan inside of Pittsburgh waving at him and Acuna just does the simplest gesture. He looks up and he waves back at him and the kid flips out <laughs> after this i mean he is so excited and yeah, why wouldn't wonderful. he be right he's in these amazing seats he's looking at his hero he waves to him or maybe it's not his hero he looks like he's in pirates gear but he's obviously someone that he knows and that's gonna stick with that kid forever you're talking about growing the game it, it, you know not only does that impact that kid i guarantee you other kids around the world see that and think man i could go to a baseball game and one day one of my heroes could wave to me too I think that plus all the stuff that's happening with the Little League World Series has me thinking a lot about what the future looks like for baseball. And it was cool to see. What about you, Nick? Actually, Absolutely. skip I yours because yours is an abomination in the eyes of God. Well, I'm going yours... to talk about it. I wanted to talk about that. I uh, oh. very quickly. Can we just make it so that kids get the front row of every game? That'd be cool. Yeah, 
All right. All those can damn we just do that? rich little kids with yeah. all the milk money. Yeah. Can we can we just make it so that hey kid, you're coming to the stadium? We got we just give away tickets to some kids going. I, in there in that's my wild thought. Make every yeah. young kid dress up like Marlins man, but give them the front row. <laughs> just make every stadium have like a hundred tickets that they give out just to kids every day. And it's just the front that's row great. is always that. And that, how do you okay. want to get youths in the game? There you go. Done. There's my wild thought. There's my wild thought. The Orioles did this a couple of weeks ago. It's not very uh, too wild. If there's a rain delay, all of your seating goes away. And you could get whatever seat you want in the stadium. Orioles did this. A it's a bum ago. rush. It's not a bum rush, but here's the thing. Because you only have like 20 people in the stands. It's an Orioles game. If I you have, you. if you have, very funny. <laughs> if you have a ticket, like that's a front row seat, that's obviously yeah. honored, but everyone gets to come down and fill the lower bowl. Mm. It doesn't, there's no point in going back to the nosebleeds. If it's a 30 minute rain delay, it's just not, Oh, I hate it. <laughs> so if, I mean, how can we not discuss this very quickly? It's going, it's making the rounds. Um, a, uh, a a Yankee fan poked a hole through a hot dog, and then put his hot dog in his beer and is using the hot dog as a straw. You That's hate this? So foul. It's so, I. It's funny because I've actually come close to doing this. I drank. Wait, mean, a, oh, 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 what are you so upset about? Because I uh, first of all, I love hot dogs, and uh, I'm like <laughs> I'm like I'm like January Jones from Mad Men. I like hot dogs. Um, I. Did this in Milwaukee where I drank a Bloody Mary through a hollowed out Slim Jim, uh, mm -hmm. and it was delicious. This to me has taken it too far. This is too far. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say right now, he's not hurting anyone. He's doing his own thing. It's Why are you judging this man? Well, he's let him do what he wants. He's going to eat the thing anyway. He's going to drink the thing anyway. Let him do this. He's not harming anybody. You know, the guy wants to go to a game and come up with this fun thing where he drinks his beer through his hot dog. Let him do it. It turns me. It may, Poor it guy. I bet this body. guy is like mortified right now that he's like been exposed in this way for this. You know, just no, you can't say that dog you're, per you're perpetuating his mortification. No, I am defending the man. Okay. I, I need to give a stage so that people can be like, stop. Stop making this guy feel horrible about himself. Let him have a he hot dog and his beer. He's at his. He's at the baseball game. I, I okay. Really can't look at it. All right. It really? Jesus. It's, okay. It's, it does to uh, you. What, it does to me what Kyle Farnsworth did to you. Oh my God, that was okay. We're not going to talk about Miss KF anymore. <laughs> um. All right. So fast. This is your favorite thing ever. Who will yeah, win the yeah. World Series? And we've gone over the Marlins, the Orioles, the Brewers, the Mets, the Guardians, Atlanta, the Mariners, Astros, Yankees, the Padres, and the Dodgers. Who's next? This is why I, I said what I said earlier uh, about the Cardinals yeah, not right, making yeah. the playoffs because <laughs> I wanted to directly contradict myself at the end uh, of the podcast by saying the team that's most likely to win the World Series is indeed the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, do you know which team Muffin Man. Uh, leads baseball in every pertinent offensive category since the all-star break. Oh yeah. Well, that is the Cardinals. They've been super it's hot. It's the Cardinals. I'm not yeah. talking just about average and OBP. I'm talking no, average OBP not... slugging Woba and WRC plus. You have a guy who's probably going to win the MVP in the NL in Paul Goldschmidt, or will definitely be in the conversation followed by Nolan Arenado. Obviously the boost that Albert Pujols has given. Um, and <laughs> This is insane. I want to read Albert Pujols' slash line uh, in the last 60 plate appearances. Okay, so he's only played in 19 games. This is just out of like 27 possible games since, mm -hmm. since the All-Star break. This is yeah. his slash line in this time. Okay. 453, uh -huh. 500, okay. 962. Oh, man. With a 305 WRC+. plus. That's pretty good. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're getting Jack Flaherty back. They've got a really nice staff that they could round out. So, yeah, they're they're kind of my pick. They've been on fire. And while they will not be able to, su to sustain that fire, they've got enough very good players that they'll be able to say, stay dominant. Uh, so, yeah, Cardinals are going to be my pick. Well, all right. That's a lovely pick fast. Uh, and I, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm hating on everyone today. And by the way, the mystery pitcher this week, uh, Fast, you were incorrect. Ah, NL Central. Eric Lauer? No. no uh, he, is, he, said, he said Chicago Cubs. Chicago Justin Steele? No. Oh. I don't know. It is Drew Smiley. 
Drew Smiley. Drew Smiley. He's, he's thrown 83 innings. That's kind of crazy. 83 innings, 93 mile per hour fastball, but 33rd best swing strike rate, 13.6%. Expect that carry to continue rising as he's had been super hot as of late. But all right, that is going to do it for this episode of the Nick and Alex Baseball Show. We can't thank all of you enough for rating and reviewing us on iTunes, hanging out with us in chat at twitch.tv slash pitchlist every week. And of course, just hanging out and you know talking baseball with us. So my name is Nick Pollock. And I am Alex Fast, and we'll talk to you guys next week.